Well, here we are for an impromptu, very different variety of maps post game here. I don't gotta tell you guys, this is not good. And how quickly the tone changes in 24 hours. First of all, you notice I have my daughter here with me. That is because my wife is out of town and don't suck your thumb. My wife is out of town and so for the next couple of days, Really? You refused to take your nap earlier, but now you want to come on here and hijack my video. Okay, fair enough. For the next couple days, I got solo duty on this whole parenting thing. So, I'm gonna try to real quick go through a rundown of the Mavericks' disastrous loss last night to the Golden State Warriors. Here's a few things to note. The Warriors, had no one on their roster available that was taller than six foot seven. It did not matter. Even their backup center was out. Baby, I don't know what you're doing. Even their backup center was out, and they still crushed Dallas in the paint. The paint scoring in this game was an astounding, astounding uh, 50 to 28. And that wasn't even the final paint scoring. That was just throughout the game, like in the third quarter, how bad things were. You let Kelly Oubre, who has been, child, who has been averaging about 12 points per game this year, drop a 40 burger on you. A 40 burger on you. At halftime, the Mavericks led 74 72. They had all kinds of firepower working, right? Luka was balling. KP really got going in that third quarter. KP knocked down a bunch of threes in this game, but oh my God, was he shredded defensively. Now here's the thing. This was a matchup nightmare for KP. Not just that it was small ball, but the Warriors and how they attack. It's too, much, too difficult in that middle ground. He wasn't going to be able to deal with the, the speed and athleticism that they had to, to make the kind of impact the Mavericks needed. But... And it all goes wrong for the Mavericks at the end of the third quarter. You really want to mash that keyboard, don't you? It all goes wrong for the Mavericks towards the end of the third quarter. And, uh, you know, it, it goes from a back-and-forth high-scoring game to just an utter, utter blowout. The Warriors shoot over 50% from the field, over 45% from three. Through three quarters, <laughs> they had 127... Oh, sorry. Sorry. They had 127 points with 628 left in the fourth quarter. The Mavericks fly the white flag. They pull all their starters. It is an absolute beating, a 31-point drubbing on your home floor to a team with nobody six foot seven, or no one taller than six foot seven available. That's beyond unforgivable. That is inexcusable and it is so bad and drastic of a loss that I finally am coming around to this notion of, you know what, it's not working with Carlisle. Because I could accept them losing last night. I could. I could not and cannot accept how they lost. This was utter cratering. This team needs a major blockbuster. We're talking like a seven-player trade that completely transforms this roster because... What you got's not working. I understand that you haven't had all your guys at full strength for a while, but if you want to do something this year, you are going to very quickly start running into a situation where you don't have the firepower that you need to keep digging out of this hole. And the Mavericks, they've, seen, they've shown glimpses this year, but we haven't seen anything that tells us they're ready to dig up out of this hole. If it goes much deeper than this, like th with this kind of performance... There's not really a way to to justify that belief. The Mavericks had 76 in the first half. They had 40 in the second half. 40 in all of the second half. The Warriors had 73 at half. They go off, get continue getting anything they wanted. And uh, the Mavericks made 23 pointers, and yet they still got run off. That's a season high for three pointers for the Mavericks. As Craig Miller, Junior Miller of the Ticket, points out on Twitter, Carlisle is now 35 and 35 in games in which he's had a healthy Luca and KP available. 
My thoughts exactly. That's atrocious. I don't know if you still think KP is the second guy. I'm not quite there yet on the I'm out on my KP stock. I can say that he's nowhere near the defender this year that he was last year because last year you were all kinds of interested in this camera because last year he was never this kind of defensive liability. Even when his offense wasn't there, KP could do whatever he wanted on the defensive end. He was still a versatile defender and a major shot blocker. The Mavericks this year don't have a single guy. Your second leading shot blocker is James Johnson at .8 blocks per game. We talked about how between Maxi Kleba, KP, Johnson, uh, Willie Cauley-Stein, all these guys, how the Mavericks had a major rim protectors. They don't. It's not panning out this year to suggest as much. And uh, as for the Mavericks when things cratered in the third quarter, Kevin Gray Jr. of Kevin Gray Sports points out that Luka's second half was four points, one of seven from the field, 0 of two from three, three assists, two turnovers, and a minus 26 on his plus minus for the second half. Now you got the hiccups. Now you got the hiccup ups. Oh, now they're gone? Okay. So yeah, 147 points for the Warriors in the, in the regulation is the most by a Mavericks opponent in franchise history. This is how historically incomprehensibly bad last night was for the Mavericks. It it's it almost is beyond reason. Like it really is. I don't know how to explain what's going on. Obviously the Warriors small ball, a lot of its success came off of targeting KP specifically in space. Guys like Andrew Wiggins and Kelly Oubre, way too small and fast for him to deal with. And they just carved up Dallas, getting everything in the paint they wanted layups dunks didn't matter and then even then they were knocking down threes they were knocking down mid-rangers again kelly Ubre, averaging 12 points a game he gets 40 on you you have damian lee who i had to look up just who in the hell he is styling on luca and calling him a little soft boy or whatever it was he called him when he got an and one in the third quarter like wow you let them come onto your court and not just style on you, but rub your face in it, and you did nothing. That's where you need your enforcer types. That's where you need someone that watches what that dude, what Damian Lee of all people just did to Luca, and then puts him on his ass on the other end the next time he gets the ball and tries to do something. That didn't happen. This Mavericks team does not have fire and fight. At least in the years that they were tanking, at least then, they tried to have pride in a loss. They fought. They had hard-fought losses that we talked about, like, oh, well, this builds character. Well, if this is supposed to be the end product of character, then no, they don't. They do not. They very, very clearly do not. Meanwhile, you have in an awkward exchange yesterday that I didn't even get a chance to talk about, uh, Mark Cuban talking with uh, Jamel Hill, and I forget who the other person was, the other woman, but... On the subject of Zach Lowe talking about how Luca complains to the ref, like he's the, one of the whiniest players in the league, he complains to the refs too much. You had Mark Cuban basically saying, quote, earmuffs, hold on, hold on, hold on, wait for it, wait for it. <clears throat> it's fine, I got earmuffs. Fuck you, you don't know shit. Earmuffs off, we're good? Yes, okay. Her child, her child innocence is maintained she didn't hear anything dude the the optics of what the franchise and what the team looks like right now this might not last much longer are so bad i don't know like it, it's not good dude it, the whole thing looks like it is a s show right now and they got to figure out what the hell they're doing i think they got to make a blockbuster trade because things aren't working right now i don't know Short of making a major trade, including serious considerations of Rick Carlisle and Kristaps Porzingis' futures in Dallas. Short of that, I don't know how you set this right. Because clearly the way you built the roster and the faith you put in the leadership you had is not panning out. And it's interesting to me how quickly national media seems to be turning 
on Luka Doncic. It feels very reactionary, but then again, that is pretty much American media. All right, she's getting hungry and cranky, so I'm going to wrap this up. It pretty much embodies American media and journalism in general. Not that that's a good thing. Not that that's the kind of journalist I want to be, because I know that's crap. It's, uh, it's nap time, I'm realizing now. So I'm going to feed my daughter and put her to bed. We'll lament more on this later, but for now... Th this, this has gotten away from me. Like the video, comment, subscribe. Until next time, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Peace! Can you say peace? You're going to get angry again. All right, later.